This is the Not So Korean podcast, and I am Jason Verney. And I am Timothy Holm. In this podcast series, we talk to one another and sometimes with special guests about what we know about Korea, what we don't know about Korea, what we want to know about Korea, and occasionally what we don't want to know about Korea. Recording live from UK's Korea town itself, an area in and around New Malden. Basically, it's not just the New Malden itself. Uh, yes, it's the uh, UK's only Korea town and Europe's largest Korea town and Korean community in Europe. Uh, let's start this episode off with a quick summary of our week. So, what have you been up to, Tim? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, in these, you know, we're still sort of in the middle of the pandemic so we haven't fully come out of lockdown yet but it still feels like pretty much things are getting back to normal here uh, at least in our local community today we had a farmer's market in New Malden so mm -hmm. uh, there were lots of people out and about uh, vendor there's a few vendors not a lot of vendors mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it was pretty interesting to see I didn't really see any Korean uh, food or anything like that. But, no, it's um, not. I don't think it's that kind of thing. But you would think yeah. by now there might be one sort of local. Yeah, you would think so. It. But I suppose maybe they didn't. I don't know. Maybe they didn't ask the Korean community. But there, I, I think there was um, that. Uh, what was it? The Korean British Senior Citizen Society or something yeah, like that. They the, were giving out free lunches. Yeah, they're based on the high mm. street, and they've um, they've been doing that for a while. Um, right. I, I don't know when it is. Whether it's every first saturday of the month or whether mm -hmm. it's every yeah. you know when they feel like it yeah. um but i i'm yeah they, they give away fr fr free food to um the old sort of the elderly or mm -hmm. senior citizens mm -hmm. or just people right. that need free food um so, maybe also i was just thinking it's to do with the maybe mm -hmm. um to do with the fact that this is only a, they've only had two or three markets since the lockdown mm -hmm. so maybe they're mm -hmm. just there were right. a few more vendors before yeah. that yeah. i did live there mm -hmm. live here before but yeah so interesting yeah, so, um, and other than that, um, I, I, the past week I've been mostly working uh, at home, as I have been doing for the past, I don't know, over a year now, uh, for a Korean company. Um, so that's that's my main job at the moment, and um, yeah, how about you? What have you been up to? Um, well, <laughs> yeah, so a similar situation to you, of course, with yeah. the... Um, you know, with the world getting back to normal, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, we actually we did go for a meal recently, mm -hmm. didn't we, with yeah. a Korean friend of ours who's yes. quite heavily involved with uh, Korean events in this area. Right. I guess that's what we should yeah. say at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's something we did recently, it's mm -hmm. Korean related. But um, other than that, I've been um, yeah, it is difficult as well not having the structure that we used to have mm -hmm. before lockdown. Mm -hmm. I mean, some businesses have gone back to not about gone back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. But with mm -hmm. your work and my work, mm -hmm. um, whether it be freelance or something similar to that, then we, you know, you don't have a structure. But that that does bring me, I suppose, to what I, yeah, what I have been working on, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, it's a, a short to medium length film that has a a, a strong Korean leaning, has strong, right. it has right. a Korean theme, yeah. Korean actors um, and actresses, and um, and so yeah, uh, yeah. How did you? come up with the idea for that film oh how mm. <laughs> that's a question i was <laughs> expecting to be asked <laughs> no i do get asked that film actually yeah. that that question but mm -hmm. um i'll um it's a long story yeah. but um give us the short version yeah yeah, yeah you obviously know me well tim <laughs> um the, the first, actually i came up with a story yeah. which had no korean mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. to speak of mm -hmm. uh, back in september 2019 mm -hmm. when i saw this particular mm -hmm. location mm -hmm. And then I fed that storyline, which I came up with this storyline for that main, for the sort of the main character, mm -hmm. one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, it needs some other element to the story. And it just so happened that there was a Korean story that I was, I was building on upon that with mm -hmm. two other, with two Korean actors. Right. So it's kind of it's gone a bit out of control, really. It's <laughs> a multi, it's dual language, it's yeah. multi camera. Right. And yeah, it's it's been three different shoots. Uh, for, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah so. I actually assisted you on a couple of yes, those that's shoots. Correct. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit familiar with what you're doing. But uh, for right. the for the audience out there, maybe they 
they're less familiar with it as you haven't released it yet. No. But do you know been... when it might come out and people I'm, might be able yeah, to see well, it? Yeah, funny, well, it's just, well, mm-hmm. funny to say that, but I mean, basically, uh, the thing is, without a deadline, you kind of, and without, this isn't a studio film, of course, so it's not like yeah. that, but it, without sort of a target, mm-hmm. a deadline, I was sitting on it, but still doing a bit every single day and, you know, and uh, correcting stuff and editing and post. But then I'm hoping to have a version of it released, uh, released to a festival anyway, mid, mid-July, mid mm-hmm. all being well. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully a cast and crew screening by the end of July, maybe August. Um, and then we'll see what happens, whether it's going to be sent to other festivals uh, there's probably going to be more than one version uh, released anyway, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, whether whether one version goes online, uh, there there might be one that's actually slightly more fed into the Korean. It's not fed in, sorry. It's it's more sort of relatable to the Korean diaspora. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. I wanted to film mm-hmm. also to be a version where it can appeal to anybody who's not interested in that. Um, mm-hmm. So it's right. less less social social issue and what have you. Okay, well, that sounds very interesting. We look forward to it. Do you have a title for the film yet, or not? Um, I do. There's an Instagram for. There's an Instagram set up for oh, it as well. Okay. It's uh, reparation, oh, and it's uh, sure. reparation underscore film. I believe is the handle. Okay. The account ID. But thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll follow that up uh, in future episodes, perhaps. Yeah. yeah so we we mm-hmm. thought we'd um, start these first couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. We thought we'd. Um, Tell tell the audience and you guys out there basically mm-hmm. what what who we are what we do. But we thought we'd start with this episode. Mm-hmm. Start this episode uh, with Tim Tim's story because okay. it's quite an interesting one, having been to Korea and all mm-hmm. that. Um, but yes, I'll pass it over to you. If that's okay. Okay. Well, I don't know where should I start. Uh, what do you want to know exactly, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what about where your interest in Korea grew? Not necessarily mm-hmm. anything too deep or personal uh, but yeah. living uh, there for yeah, example it is a long story but i'll try to truncate it a little bit at least okay um so well i guess it started on almost 20 years ago yeah because now it's 2021 i think i i first got some knowledge about korea from korean films korean cinema uh, there was a little DVD shop uh, in the town that I lived in in Canada. Um, perhaps I should say that I'm not born in the UK. My mother's English, but I, I was born in Canada. Yeah. So, um, That's come across on your accent. Yeah. Uh, I'm not American, as many no. Koreans would ask. but um, And British, probably. Well, ask. North American, technically. Yes, but yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, there was this little DVD shop in my hometown, and they they rented out DVDs of uh, Asian films, a lot of Asian films, and I was just curious, so, like, about Asian cinema in general, uh, so I watched a lot of Japanese and Chinese and Taiwanese and Hong Kong, all those films, but they also had a few Korean films around that time, because that was just when Korean cinema was starting to get, you know, a little more attention in the West. Mm-hmm like the beginning of the 2000s, late 90s, I suppose. Um, so there were films like um, My Sassy Girl, mm-hmm. Yapki Jagin Kunya in, Korea, in Korean. Mm-hmm. Or um, Old Boy, I guess, was a little bit later, but I think I saw that I around, was, around yeah, 2003 was, or something. Yeah, I think it was around then, but yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. So I watched some of those films, and I was really, I thought this is really, really interesting stuff. And um, not for the violence and things. It was just well, the way it, it, yeah, it that was it. part of it, I suppose. I mean, my sassy girl isn't that violent, but the no. girl in the film is a little bit yes, aggressive, that, yes. actually. Um, so that's interesting, but but old boy is very different. Yeah, that's a little more extreme. Uh, and actually, there was this like I remember there was a like a label or something that was called like Asia Extreme. I don't know if you know that yes, i think I've it's british it, yeah. like isn't UK, it tartan, tartan. Asian, isn't it? yes so they were purposely marketing these films like as extreme right or whatever but i mean i wasn't interested in it for that specific reason but i just thought it was very they were very refreshing films like very different from hollywood's uh hollywood films that they were doing at that time right um yeah. so yeah anyway so after that i i i was actually at the time I was more interested in Japanese culture and Japanese language so I studied Japanese language for a bit at university 
Um, but I, I eventually decided uh, that I wanted to know more about Korea uh, because I met some Korean friends in university. Okay. So they, yeah. they basically said, oh, you should visit Korea. You know, why mm -hmm. don't you, you know, uh, come over and you can, you know, hang out or whatever. Did, did you have any res reservations about the country back then? Because obviously... Well, I, it wasn't that I had any reservations. It was more like I didn't know anything yeah. about it except yeah. from what I had seen in a few films. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really know what to expect or anything. So, cause I mean, uh, I don't know how it was for you when you started to mm. get into Korea, but I think a lot of people, they know at least some things about China or Japan, but they mm. don't know as much about Korea. So it was more like, oh, I, I was like really curious, like to know more about it. Cause I just didn't know yeah, much. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. Um... And so, yeah, I, I one summer vacation, I just decided, okay, I'm going to go to Asia. It was the first time I'd ever been to a non-English-speaking country. Like, mm. I'd only been to the UK and the US before that. Yeah. Uh, so, it was quite a big, big deal for me. Okay. Um, but So, I went to Japan and Korea, but mostly I stayed in Korea in uh, Daegu and Busan because I had friends in those cities in Korea, uh, especially. I also visited Seoul at that time, but I didn't I didn't know as many people in Seoul. Um, yeah, I could go into more detail no, why I knew people in Busan and Daegu, but um, yeah, well, we can cover that in another yeah, episode yeah. if you'd like. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I visited there and I just, I really loved the culture. I thought the food was great and the, the people were so friendly and everything. Mm. So, uh, eventually after I graduated from university, I decided to teach English in Korea because they, they offered like a really, a great program for, for English teachers, you know, coming to Korea, yeah. they would provide the uh, airfare and mm. the accommodation and everything. A good salary so yeah I thought wow this is really good opportunity and I didn't have any other ideas about what I wanted to do mm. after I graduated so I just went for it and so, so just yeah. to skip ahead because yeah. obviously there's lots yeah. of stuff that sure, happened in sure, the meantime sure, sure. you yeah. were in Korea but what brought you to the UK this mm. final time let's yeah. just say fast yeah. forward to that yeah so again it's a bit of a long story but <laughs> I'd, um, just before I arrived back in the UK, which was about two years ago now, almost. Yeah, no, actually, it's like exactly two years, because I came here July 1st, 2019, or July 2nd, 2019, okay. so it's almost exactly two years. So. Ironically, yeah, that's, actually, yeah. ironically, that was, um, sorry to interrupt, yeah, but no, yeah, in, inter, uh, mm -hmm. interestingly to some, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I actually came back from Korea uh, mm -hmm. from a three-month trip in mm -hmm. Asian countries right. on the May... May the second, so yeah. it's only been like two years, right. but I have spent right. those two years in right. New Malden, uh, Koreatown. But yeah, it's been a, it's almost actually like um, I was thinking the other day that mm. uh, I went from I was in India and I went to other countries, mm. uh, ended up in Korea, which is mm. where I always go to every time mm. I go abroad, pretty right. much. Right. But the weird thing is, had I, it's almost like something subconsciously was telling mm. me there was going to be this virus yeah. and that yeah. you should live in, you're not going to be able to go to Korea, yeah. you should live in Koreatown. Right. <laughs> so ironically, I'd already, I'd moved to Koreatown for some dis mm. different circumstances mm. and then this all happened yeah. and now I can't go to Korea. But uh, I'm, yeah, I'm at the next best, next best place, yeah. some would say. And, and I mean, I didn't, I didn't move to New Malden until last year. Uh, yeah. But I probably wouldn't have come here if I didn't know somebody who was living here, and that somebody yeah. happens to be you. Yeah, I helped uh, you a bit. Yeah. So, but I'm glad that I'm here now because yeah, it is. It's sort of. Yeah. It's not like I'm living in Korea exactly, but it is sort of a little more feels a little more comfortable or something familiar to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, where was I? I don't know. Um, um, probably, that's <laughs> probably because I interrupted you. Yeah, that's but, right. uh, <laughs> So, um, no, that's oh, okay. So, yes, where you, yeah, why, you why I'm back in the UK. Well, uh, just before I came back to the UK, I was actually studying Korean in the Netherlands for, uh, for a master's degree. I was oh, doing yes. Korean studies. So, um, I just had to finish my final semester there. Um, and 
Yeah, that's another long story why I was okay. studying Korean in the Netherlands, but anyway. Yeah, that's the weekend to cover um, that another time. But I just, yeah, actually, originally, I, I was just thinking of coming to the UK for like a month or two, just see, you know, just hang out with people and uh, see what was happening in 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 in, in, mm. in London, mainly, uh, and maybe visit my relatives or something. But, uh, yeah, I just decided, well, why not just stay here? You know, uh, I like to hear my mother's from here, but she's living in Canada now. But I mm. do have uh, British citizenship, so it's easy for me to stay here. Yeah. Uh, Unlike no, if you no were... No issues you... with a visa or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, it's not so, like you're European yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Brexit affected yeah, you. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. So, um, actually, yeah, I was thinking about Brexit. Like, um, yeah maybe I should stay here for a bit and just see what happens or whatever, that kind of thing. But okay. anyway, yeah. So, uh, and then by the time I made up my mind, the pandemic started. And so I didn't really feel like traveling anywhere at that point. So I'm basically, I've been stuck here. We're stuck. Then. with you. <laughs> the UK is stuck, uh, here, which is only a good uh, thing. Which yeah. is a good thing mm. from my point of view, having known you for yeah, several, right, several years. Right, right. Um, so uh, yeah, well that's fine. Well, I think with with regard to your story, and there's obviously loads of stuff yeah, we can touch yeah, on again. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. I think for now that's that's that sounds mm-hmm. interesting. Okay. You know, um, next time we'll do my story if yeah, if, yeah, uh, if people. Sure, I mean your yours goes back even farther than mine. I think it's some no, ways, yeah. not quite. No, but um, well, it depends on probably you know what we want to talk about. But, yes, that's yeah. true. Yes, I mean we we've known each other. <laughs> yeah, if we just talk like, about the Korea. Uh, the Korea stuff then yeah and also I've gone off in different different, yeah. different, different directions yeah. and you've yeah. gone off in your yeah. different directions yeah. so it's quite interesting we've got between the two of us we probably cover a, a lot of the Korean elements yeah. of certain subjects of course we don't we don't claim to know everything no uh, hence we, we the certainly reason. don't I mean that's one reason we're doing this is to find out more because we don't know enough so we want to ask each other questions and we want to yeah. ask other people questions yeah. eventually um people from our local community and also people maybe in korea or yeah. are involved with korean culture yeah people that are not from korea yeah. that are involved with korean culture yeah. as well yeah, yeah. and people that yeah. so yeah that's uh, but maybe i should uh, we should maybe say how we got to know each other first and why we started this podcast so. yeah i mean that's that would be great if my memory yeah. wasn't so bad yeah. but <laughs> no i can um well how we got to know each other mm-hmm. was initially probably i think it was 2013 mm-hmm. Yeah. There was um there was the, the Korean Cultural Center at that time with they did they do a wonderful in fact that was one of the reasons I got into Korean mm-hmm. fil- uh, films and culture mm-hmm. and went to yeah. Korea yeah. in the first place was cuz the Korean Cultural Center had mm-hmm. they showed films so regularly for free at their place. Right. But yeah, we they, they that year they had um the year of four actors. Mm-hmm. They'd already yeah. had I think they'd already had the year of they'd already had the 2012 the year, year of, of the directors yeah 12 directors so they all came over That's here right. Im Kontek right. and EJ Yong and right. loads of others and uh, then and they also had the Olympics 2012 mm, but then right. 2013 yeah. um, was when they had the four ac- mm. actors Moon Sori um uh Yes. Uh, I mean, sorry, my God, how can yeah. I? I mean, sorry. Uh, uh, the guy from Old Boy. Yes, uh, of course. That guy. <laughs> okay. How can we get to go? Oh my God. Yeah, we're just having some mind. Uh, yeah, I've got. Well, by the brain incidentally, brain. while we're talking about this, yeah. we um, if you if you want to find mm-hmm. th- such interviews, yeah. you can find them on uh, my website, mini mini movie <laughs> dot com. Plug, good, uh, yeah. Well, I couldn't resist that. Yeah. But there, anyway, it was an interesting year. Yeah. Um, there was some. Uh, yeah, uh, some, Trey, Trey Min Shik was one. Yeah, Trey Min Shik and the uh, Ha yeah. Jung Wu. He was the other yes, one, yes, and yes. we didn't look that up, by the way. Yeah, no, we didn't. We, just, <laughs> we, we, we were stalling, but we we, we just our brains running. were luckily ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, what I was going to say was, I think we we met there, and yeah. amongst all that, what I would look back on now was yeah. chaos, yeah. Korean. Just yeah. it felt like yeah. Korean culture overload, yeah. and it still is now, even though the world's locked down. There's a lot of Korean culture going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, in fact, another plug to somebody else while I think of it is uh, LondonKoreanLinks.net. dot mm-hmm. net. That is yeah. um, run by Philip Goman uh, or Gaman, uh, depends mm-hmm. which way you pronounce it. But he's um, he keep, if you want to know anything that's going on in the UK, not yeah. just London, um, he's 
that website has pretty much got it mm-hmm. covered with yeah. a few contributors from others. But yeah, we met. Yeah, tons of interesting content on there. Definitely worth checking out. And then when I remember quite heavily, it's 2014, mm-hmm. the book fair, yeah. the London book yes. fair. Was it Korea was the market? Korea was the market focus country. Yeah. Yeah, this, the, the sort of the guest, guest country that year. So mm. they had a lot of uh, booths related to Korean literature and Korean publishing companies yeah. that were there. They had authors over, poets, yeah, yeah, authors yeah, anyway. Yeah. Chris and Lee some was translators there. were, yeah, gave some talks yeah. and things. And that's uh, actually where I learned about the uh, Korean Literature Translation Institute, which I eventually studied at because I, you know, yeah. found out about the program at that uh, book fair. So, yeah, I should say that even though I've been in London for two years, I, I used to live in London from 2012 to 2014 as well. Mm. Did you mention so, how long you lived yeah. in Korea, or are we going to cover that next time? Uh, in total, I lived there for six years, but it was sort of off and on. Yeah, you know, OK, I couldn't remember that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, going to that, then, then of course, uh, you were in Korea. I went to Korea. I've been there seven times. But there was a time when I was going to Korea sort of in October, partly because of the Busan Film Festival. Yeah. But there was a time when I kind of made it a ritual. Yeah. It was almost a religion, if you like, yeah. that my birthday was well. I was in Korea. Um, yeah, right. So I remember meeting you at yeah. least once yeah, those birthday, birthday nights party. out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were there then. So we kept yeah. this relationship yeah. going. Right. And obviously what with social media mm-hmm. and you actually, I remember you were staying in London mm-hmm. a couple of years right. ago, yeah, a few years ago. And visit, yeah. there was somewhere yeah. I knew you could right. also um, stay and... Um, yeah, it's those kind of things where we yeah, just kept yeah, in Facebook contact. Yeah, Facebook and things, yeah, too. Yeah, well, um, well that's good. Well, we, we'll cover this in other, other episodes, okay. um, yeah. but we do. We, we won't just be us two talking yeah. to one another like this. No, but hopefully we'll be interviewing some other people soon. Yeah, yeah we've already got, uh, potentially got a couple of others uh, lined up. Um, just a couple of things I want to mention before we close yeah. this episode. Um, we just wanted to... Well, there's. Well, there's what's, the, what's of... the purpose of this podcast? <laughs> Didn't we mention that at the beginning, where we, we where we said uh, yeah. what well, we want to know about Korea? We don't. Yeah. Know. But we well, let, yeah. let's elaborate on that actually, yeah. because yeah, that's, uh, thanks for mem- yeah. Mem- mem- jog- jog- jogging yeah, my just to slightly clarify, older brain. Clarify it for people who might be interested. So yeah. we're 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 wanting to know more about Korea, but we're yeah. also wanting to see what people's opinions are on certain mm-hmm. things, Korea, from different angles, mm-hmm. whether that be Korean people and non-Koreans. Mm-hmm. Because it's amazing how many Koreans will have... Well, they're like any other country. They have different views on, on the same things. Mm-hmm. For example... Well, you can go, you go down lots yeah. of rabbit yeah, holes on this. Yeah. But um, there's the political stuff we want to cover. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the history of Korea, which mm-hmm. is so, so... Um, so varied. Yeah, yeah, yeah fractured. And fractured as well, yeah. yeah. That's the thing mm-hmm. I was looking for. In fact, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's mm-hmm. something that attracts me to yeah. it in, in many ways. Yeah. But... We want to we want to delve into those sort of topics, mm-hmm. or all kinds of topics, mm-hmm. and that could be from stuff that's going on in our local community mm-hmm. because we're yeah. getting quite in involved New, now. New yeah, yeah. yeah, in New Malden, we're going. Kingston also is considered, yeah, I guess part of Koreatown. Yeah, well, that's where yeah. when they say there's like seventeen or eighteen thousand yeah. Koreans yeah. here, yeah. I think they mean Worcester Park as well yeah. and that, but yeah. New Malden. Yeah, right. Kingston as a whole, I think. They they've, they've got, got some and. Yeah, yeah, that's it, and Worcester Park and Sutton as well. But yeah, yeah it's it's quite. We're, we're finding out a lot of stuff. It's amazing. I've only been in Koreatown for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I've lived in a Korean temple for five months, but I'll explore, <laughs> I'll yeah, explain more, explain more, uh, explain more about that in another the next mm-hmm. episode. But um, I've just learned so much. So I thought the stuff that I thought I would know already about mm-hmm. Korea um, after sort of a decade into the culture, uh, mm-hmm. filming events and uh, writing about it and what have you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's what what else do you think? Well, I mean that's mm-hmm. that's yeah. what we're going to cover. But yeah, it's, it's not just about this community. Yeah. It's about stuff that's going on in Korea. What our mm-hmm. opinions are, yeah. what other people's opinions are, yeah. and also is it any way of resolving mm-hmm. problems that we think mm-hmm. yeah, could be? Yeah, so tackled. often people consider or they think of Korea as being very homogenous society, like very especially racially, like um, quote unquote pure. Although I would debate that. But in terms of their um, ways of thinking, I think there's a very huge diversity of different, um, you know, different political views and different social views uh, in Korea and outside of Korea, of course. 
And then you have the different communities, the North Korean community, the South Korean community, and the Korean Chinese community, who all sort of mix together here in New Malden, right? So it's a very interesting place to live, uh, especially to get different, you know, different perspectives on Korea and what Korean culture is and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Mm. Um. Yeah, so... Anyway, so we're hoping to get some different, like I said, different perspectives from different people living in the community and also outside the community. And we'll we'll try to keep it focused each episode to one or two topics so it won't get too um, messy, so to speak. Mm. Well, then we could yeah. probably just close this with a couple of bits yeah, of news sure, that we, sure. we literally coincidentally found out. I mean, something you told me about was yeah. uh, Coldplay, their, new, mm-hmm. their latest video... Um, is uh, f- basically dance is f- is is filmed in Korea. Yeah, Seoul, right. I guess, or yes. maybe not Seoul. I yes. think it was. I can't remember. With the ambiguous dance company. I yeah, think it was them, was it? The, yes, uh, the the dance group. Yeah, they're really interesting. I think they actually worked with Inalchi or Lee Nalchi, which was very uh, popular recently because they did a series of video- videos for the Korean um, Tourism Bureau or agency or whatever they call it organization. And so I think they are connected a little bit, or the, some. Of, I'm not sure if some of the people are the same dancers or not, but at least they they worked together or they collaborated before. So anyway, they're really really interesting and good uh, uh, group of dancers, and they appear in this video that Coldplay uh, put on their official uh, YouTube channel recently, mm. like a week ago or something. And yeah. yeah, it's really cool. You see lots of shots of Seoul around the city, and I think maybe even outside of Seoul a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. So check it out if you can. That's and, good. Yeah. Oh, it, then what's the name of the video again? Higher Power. I yeah. Think it is. yeah. I don't think it's a person. I don't think it's one of the. <laughs> we've had this chat before. They were. Yeah. They've had, they've had some much better songs in the past, but they have changed their style. Mm-hmm. But that's another. Yeah, another story. Another story. Yeah. Um, one other thing, which was again, this is not something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just noticed something on the uh, Kingston, the Odeon, well, the Odeon website, which is about Black Pink's. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. There's a documentary regarding mm-hmm. Black Pink, which mm-hmm. were apparently a, a, a K-pop band. K-pop I, I'm not that yeah. familiar with mm-hmm. K-pop, and yeah. uh, we'll go into that in another episode. Um, yeah, so that's coming to UK cinemas. Yeah, I think so. it's in the next few days. Mm-hmm. So keep yeah. an eye on the the Odeon app, which they've actually got. Well, they've got a great deal. I won't go into mm-hmm. it because we're not kind of promoting right. it, but they've got yeah. a really good deal at the moment for seeing lots of films in one month. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know if we'll actually be seeing that documentary, but if if people are interested and they want us to talk about it more, maybe we could possibly do that. But we'll, I don't know if we'll get much reaction on that. But um, anyway. Yeah, it's I out wonder, there if anyone's interested. Yeah. I wonder if, um, yeah, no, that's that's it. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but um, yeah, I was just thinking while we're um, talking of music, we might as well talk about the music that we played in on the show. Mm-hmm. Sure, right. that's by a band or sorry, a, a duo who mm-hmm. lived in the UK, um, uh, lived in the UK a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they might currently be in Korea, but their their, their name is Kaya, mm-hmm. or Gaia, right. C A, right. uh, sorry, K A Y A. Um, the track is it's a version of Arirang. It's called New Arirang. Arirang being the Korean sort of classic. Um, yeah, that everyone the, knows. It's everyone almost knows, like yeah. a national anthem, national although anthem, yeah. it isn't officially. I um, and their, I think their, their album is Korean Breeze. But the whole yeah. album is very melodic, very mm-hmm. beautiful, actually. Um, mm-hmm. a, a Korean Breeze, it's called, mm-hmm. and uh, by Kaya. Yeah, great, great um, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I'm just yeah. So, um, well, I think that's it for this episode. Yeah, um, well, it's we'll... a good start anyway. And, uh, yeah, thanks for um, everything you've done so far to get this podcast set up, Jason. And uh, we'll talk to you again. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it progresses. Yeah. And um, we'll leave you with the music from um, Kaya with that song, um, uh, New Arirang. So let just, right. let's just uh, put that back on and yeah. you can listen to it and we'll play it out.